it was very clear, like a few people like really did not like me because they did not like the role. Like some, I eventually warmed up to all but one of them. And just like the obstacle I faced in that role was very much like, how do you show up to something every day that you love while like you're consistently being criticized internally? A lot of people are clear on this. I think like there's been enough research and publicity around it, but women get two to 3% of all venture capital dollars. And we're two women who raised capital in Iowa. We were like not in the Bay Area or like in New York City. Like we we did that and you know, it took a lot of calls and like a lot, a lot of meetings and just showing up and like creating conviction and showing traction. But but I'm really proud of that. And uh, I will continue to kind of hype it, not for like an ego sake, but to be like, if I can do this as a non-technical founder who's never done this in Iowa, like what's possible for you? Right? Like let's let's get you there. I mean, you are like defeat all odds. Like this is the most, I think, optimistic podcast I think we've recorded where it's like, I can do anything. Watch. Welcome to the She's So Sweet podcast, where we interview accomplished women who have worked their way to the C-suite. I'm your host, Christy Falteruso, Chief Customer Officer and award-winning customer success executive. I am so thrilled to introduce today's guest, Emily Steele, co-founder and CEO of Hummingbirds. Hi, Emily. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm like, you like have news anchor abilities. I'm like, this is your next (laughs) calling. (laughs) One day, one day. I don't know how this customer success thing is going to work out long term. So it's always good to have a backup plan. There we go. (laughs) Thanks for having me. (laughs) I'm so excited about your story, and I I can't wait for us to get into everything. But before we get started, I think it would be super important for us to just set the stage for our listeners. So let's tell them a little bit about Hummingbirds, and let's tell them about your role as the co-founder and CEO and kind of what that looks like in the organization. Yeah. So I'm CEO, co-founder of Hummingbirds, just like you said, and I took on that role um, as part of growing a venture-backed startup. So a little bit of history. I ran a local marketing agency. I'm in Des Moines, Iowa. I was helping a lot of local brands try to drive behavior, right? Like book an appointment at a med spa, go to a physical therapy clinic, attend a music festival, all this stuff around like driving local behavior. And a lot of my clients were saying, hey, we want we want like younger generations. We want the millennials. We want the Gen Z engaging in our offers, foot traffic, et cetera. And they were telling me like, we're doing radio, we're doing print, we're doing, you know, all these things that I was like, I just, that's, I'm certainly not. I can't <laughs> Spotify, my friends. I don't know the last time I turned on the radio. And so I just have this moment of like working with uh, clients and being like, I'm the millennial trying to target and I'm not paying attention to any of the advertising you're currently doing. What if we spin it? And really put some strategy around word of mouth, getting local people talking about you, driving referrals, building social proof. And one of the hypotheses I had is like, you know, influencer marketing five-ish years ago was like blowing up. But I was like, this is not going to work in a local environment because influencers are designed to drive like online behavior, right? E-commerce, Amazon, like it's totally different than driving local behavior. But I was like, I look to my local peers to make decisions like, what summer camp should my kiddos go to? Like, right. where should I like go? What's the best restaurant to get tacos or happy hour? Like I'm looking to local peers and I'm doing that on social media. Um, and so I, I built a small group of uh, local people. We call them hummingbirds because they're like local pollinators. And they started trying out some of my clients' brands and sharing it on social media. And lo and behold, it was driving awareness and traffic in a way that my clients are really excited about. And so I had this moment where I was like, I built it for my community. I'm like naturally a community builder, have built other like local brands and projects, love, love, love my city and contributing in a meaningful way. So I was like, I'm going to do this through my agency for my local clients. But I started getting outreach from birds, hummingbirds who were like moving to other cities. They're like, when is this going to be in St. Louis or Minneapolis? I'm like, hi. Great question. That's not the plan. Um, and I had a couple of clients who were kind of enterprise level be like, hey, we're curious. Like, we want to grow with you. Like, when are you going to the next city? I was like, wow, like, this is so interesting to have this demand coming. And I always was like curious, like, what would this be like in other cities? But I felt like as someone who was kind of the local champion in the face of the brand, I was like, I don't know how this translates to another city if we're not there. But I want to know. And so I opened a couple other cities, built all of like the local presence via Instagram. And I was like, wow, that was really relatively easy and cheap to do. 
what happens when we get some actual capital behind this to like make the software a little more sophisticated. I like to share like I took out a loan to build software. I didn't know anything about startups tech. I was just like, hey, I need something that's not a spreadsheet to manage these content creators <laughs> and dummy birds. <laughs> um, and so I took out this loan, had like a very basic product. It worked fine for like a small, you know, a small like boutique agency. But I knew that to build something at scale, like I needed like an engineering team and some like s- better resources, aka money. Um, so I went out fundraising. I was like two months pregnant when I started the journey. Um, met my co-founder, Cherie. So two um, women founders um, as part of Hummingbirds. We raised our first million in capital. We grew to 15 cities, like really built out the team, like hit some really exciting milestones, just raised 3.3 million a few months ago and plan to be in 15 more Congratulations. Yeah. So I would say that's like in a nutshell what we do. And so in our platform today, you know, brands can create campaigns and it's all about driving local behavior. So like Olipop is one of our customers is trying to get people into Costco's to like get their product at a local Costco and try it. Right. So it's not just like your local mom and pop shops, although we love those brands, like any brand that needs local advertising and awareness can use our platform to find people who will do it versus like billboards, print TV, which aren't bad, but just totally different for consumers making decisions from friends, you know? So you're building a network of these hummingbirds. So you're bringing in the people and you're bringing in the products and through your technology, you're bringing them together. Exactly. So it's like a a marketplace. Like you think like the Airbnbs and Ubers of the world, we do the matchmaking of the people and the brands. You're like a dating website for, yeah. for brands and influencers. <laughs> exactly. It's I really love it. Such a local level. It's been really fun. Oh, well, listen, you're obviously on to something. Congratulations on your last round. I know how hard it is to raise, especially in this market and with, you know, all of the other factors. And we'll talk about that, right? Being a woman-owned co-owned, right, organization that also some strikes against us, unfortunately. Um, but we'll talk about that in a minute. I want to, I want to like rewind big yeah. time. Like I want to go back, 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 because obviously this is something you've been working on for a while. It's been a huge passion of yours. And obviously you guys are driving immense success. So congratulations on that. But what did little Emily want to do? Cause I can't imagine that when you were young, you were sitting around going, I cannot wait to build this brand platform to bring brands and influencers together. So what was it that you wanted to do? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm running a SaaS enabled marketplace. No, it wasn't (laughs) at eight years old or whatever. My dad is a drummer, and to me, that was, like, the coolest thing in the world to be a musician like my dad, and so I always, like, I knew, like, music and drumming and performance, like, was something that, like, really spoke to me. Like, fifth grade, I remember the um, music teacher, like, I auditioned to be a drummer, and they were like, how about the clarinet? And I was like, nope, like I am a drummer and I will be one, you know, like girls weren't necessarily put into percussion. And so I remember that was a moment that I felt like really strong and bold, like this is the path I want and I'm going to get it. And I did. So I would say that was like something that was really, really important to me at that time. Okay. I, there's, there's two things I love here. One, advocating for what you want, especially at a young age. I feel like There are grownups today that still do not know how to advocate for themselves. So like snaps to you for doing that. I got to ask, what drum did you play? So I love snare drum. Snare drum. That's a fun one. That's so fun. A really fun one for sure. (laughs) That's great. Um, And then your dad, was he in a band? Like, no, he played at the church and like in the basement. Oh, right? I love he that. So like he was very into like the nickelbacks, but also playing at the church is very I'm like, those two don't necessarily go together, but you know, <laughs> like it was so inspiring me how into it he got and you could just feel like his creative expression. And to me that was so like I didn't see a lot of creative expression growing up in like a really small town, except for I feel like an artist. And so to me it was very it was just very inspiring. Oh, I love that so much. And so, okay, give me a little bit about how this evolved because obviously you didn't go straight from drummer to yeah. CEO. So like what happened in between that? Yeah. You know, I felt like, you know, growing up in a, an environment where it was like so much of your identity is wrapped around like your GPA, like how good, like, are you on varsity? Are you like, how tight are you to your success in these like very like boxed ways, right? In school. And that's yeah. like, 
this is what you knew growing up and at least what I knew. And so I was like, I'm not really into like math or science or like anything that would be like, whoa, you're going to be an engineer someday, or you're totally going to be a doctor or something like that. Um, I always did well because you like I had to, but, um, I very much like I learned from a mentor of mine when I was 16, the Enneagram. So I know we just chatted pre-recording about that. I'm I'm going to lift it up for anyone who's watching. So this is Um, one of the books. Um, Enneagram made easy. Yes. Yeah. So I had a mentor who like, she's like, you should take this quiz. Like, let's dig into it together. Let's get to know who you are and like what you bring to the world. And um, I found out through that that I'm an Enneagram 7, the enthusiast. And that was so interesting to me because I loved creating and building and I never, ever tied that to entrepreneurship until I was like 24 because the things I was modeled, like I grew up pre-social media, like dial up internet, right? So I didn't see really anything beyond what was possible outside of like owning a bakery or being a banker or being a farmer. Like that's what I was exposed to. And so I really think like thanks to social media, so many people would be like, social media has made people worse. So da, 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 it's a whole conversation. But I'm like, for me, it ex- it was an expander because I was like, oh my gosh, you can create in so many ways and build. And um, it really just gave me this curiosity. And I am such a naturally like, if I'm curious about something, I'm going to implore. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to like dig in. I'm going to research. I'm going to try and test. And so I, you know, I went, I went to college because my parents said I had to, (laughs) and I (laughs) followed my high school boyfriend to where he went and the school was good. You know, it was one of those like, fine, I guess if I have to do it, like I'll go like where I know someone (laughs) that I apparently love who totally broke up with me in the first week, by the way, it's fine, but figures, um, (laughs) right. Think about those days. That was like the biggest thing in my life. And now I'm like, that that worked out um, how it needed to. And so went to school and I was like, uh, my roommate studying marketing and PR communications seems good. Like I like creating and sharing. And so did the marketing PR thing um, and knew that like I wanted to make a difference. And I didn't necessarily know what that meant. Like all my peers were going to either like big uh, ad agencies or they going to corporate America. And so I was like, I'm going to do some nonprofit internships. Like I want to do things that feel really good and they give back. And like for you, I think like maybe, I don't know if you've ever had this mindset, but I felt like to do good meant you had to like suffer financially. Like doing good meant in the world meant that you didn't need a big paycheck, right? Like you should like, there was something like messed up in my mindset there. Um, but I don't think it's messed up in your mind. Can we also establish the fact that like nonprofits, yeah. education, like these nursing, like these giving sectors do yeah. not pay the best, yeah. Yeah. right? So I don't think that like, I don't think it's us. I think it's yeah. the world has designed this space that we believe, right? Like is that, yes, if we're going to do this, we have to not be in it for the money. We're in it for the goodness of the work that we're doing. Yeah. Yep. And that was just totally like where my head was at. So I was like, I'm going to be the executive director of a nonprofit and I'm going to work like that was leadership to me, right? Like that was like what C-suite would have meant. And so I did all these things. I graduated college and I like had kind of a two month window. I always love sharing this story because it's just like a unique fun fact. (laughs) Um, I uh, was like, I'm going to do a year of AmeriCorps, which started in August. So I had like May to July open. And I read this really interesting book about a guy who like, uh, he biked across the country to like find purpose and meaning in his life. And I was like, that's inspiring. I applied to do the same trip. And I was like, they're never going to pick me. I don't own a bike. I don't have time to train. And they were like, you're accepted. I was like, surely this is a mistake. <laughs> but um, I ended up getting accepted. I nannied a week during spring break, like made enough money to buy a road bike, met some strangers in San Diego, biked my booty across the like Southern US. And I'll tell you like, some people are like, you know, that, you know, some people, the perceptions are all different. Right. But like my, that experience for me showed me like mind over matter all the time. Like that is totally like a mindset thing where you just pedal and pedal and it's hot as heck. Like it's stressful. It, but it taught me who I was. Like I've never had like 10 hour days where I'm just alone on a bike by myself with my own thoughts. Like I really got to like really dig into who I am and what I wanted. So I came back from that and I just felt like, limitless. There was something about that was like, if I can do that, I can do anything. Like that was hard, but it was all mental. Um, besides it it just is like that type of journey. 
And so I came back, I started local events, I started a women's networking group, a pop-up yoga brand. I was still working in nonprofit, but I was like kind of side hustling and um, did enough like community-based brand stuff that was successful that people were like, can you do this for my company? Which kind of gets us to like the local marketing agency where I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. I can like do community-based kind of marketing uh, for you and start the agency, grow my tech company out of that. And like, just continue to follow the breadcrumbs of my curiosity. Like never would have envisioned myself being a female tech executive or just a tech leader in general, but so cool that naturally, like I can watch all of the pieces connect to getting us here, right? Where we are today talking. Listen, I, you've made that journey sound far too rosy for me. So I'm not buying it, which means I know that somewhere in there, there are obstacles, challenges that you had to be, that you were facing. Like, tell me about some of the hardship, because I feel like, you know, I think it's important for us to always reflect back on successes, but then also remember what we overcame. Now, obviously your bike story is, um, that is pretty impressive. Uh, I wasn't ready for that story. So that's awesome. Um, I don't know that I could have done that, but I feel like I have the same thought as I prepare to run the New York, New York City Marathon. And I'm like, <gasps> it's like this daunting thing, but I'm like, I know it's just going to be right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, left. And like, and just kind of just do it. And it's going to be mental and just be present and do the thing. So I'm going to, I'm going to use you as my inspiration because that is far less than what you did. <laughs> Okay. So now let's go back. I need to know what were some of those, the obstacles and some of the challenges that you had to professionally navigate during your journey? Gosh, I think about like one of my first roles, like outside of AmeriCorps, like getting my first kind of full-time job in community development. Like I got hired for a role that very much was like nothing I'd ever done before. I was neighborhood engagement coordinator was my first title. I have a marketing and PR background, right? Like I'm not a community planner, city planner in any way, but I was put into a role that I got to really quickly kind of define and navigate as like a 22 year old. And work culture wise, like I just had a few people who never wanted this role in the company to exist. I didn't know that when I got the job, right? Like I don't think to ask these questions at like that age to be like, how is this supported within departments? Da, da, da. But um it was very clear, like a few people like really did not like me because they did not like the role. Like some, I eventually warmed up to all but one of them. And just like the obstacle I faced in that role was very much like, how do you show up to something every day that you love while like you're consistently being criticized internally? Um, just because people are like, this isn't where the revenue should go in the company. Da, da, da. Um, so I that was like a big obstacle, especially at that age, right? Where you're like, I can change the world. I can do all these things and not anticipating my peers totally hating the work I did and not seeing the value of it for the company. Uh, I ended up leaving that job. I tell people like, I would definitely still be doing community development work, community building and engagement if I didn't have that fellow coworker who just basically wanted to ruin my life, you know? Um, And that was just that sucks. But it was also one of those lessons of like, you don't have to stay somewhere where you hate like your environment and work right. culture does matter. So that's really, you know, been very clear as I build this team today of like, if there is someone in my work environment, and this person did not just do this to me, right? Like this person criticized and pretty much didn't like anyone but himself, right? So I, um, yeah, I was like, how do we create a culture that's not that? And if there is poison, that poison's out. Like one person can really, really impact an right. entire culture, and that's, that's not true. invited here. So that's a big one. And then kind of your typical, like I'm a woman raising venture capital with another female founder, like that journey. And I'm sure like a lot of people are clear on this. I think like there's been enough research and publicity around it, but women get two to 3% of all venture capital dollars. And we're two women who raised capital in Iowa. We were like not in the Bay Area or like in New York City, like we we did that and you know it took a lot of calls and like a lot a lot of meetings and just showing up and like creating conviction and showing traction but it's really really cool i'm excited to be able to like hold on to that memory as long as i can and i, I hope those numbers eventually change it's very very low so um but i'm really proud of that and uh, i will continue to kind of hype it not for like an ego sake but to be like if i can do this as a non technical founder who's never done this in iowa like what's possible for you, right? Like, let's, let's get you there. So I would say those are like 
too, like early journey and then kind of like as of late, I would say. I mean, you are like defeat all odds. Like this is the most, I think, optimistic podcast I think we've recorded where it's like, I can do anything. Watch. It's like, watch me. I'm going to. The She's So Sweet podcast is brought to you by Client Success. Client Success is an all-in-one customer success platform to help post-sale implementation and success teams manage customers from new to renew. Through an industry-leading platform approach, Client Success gives businesses an in-depth view into customer health, product usage trends, along with churn and risk data so that your team can not only retain customers, but help them grow as well. Whether it's managing customer onboarding workflows in shared portals, building custom health scores, tracking sentiment with NPS surveys, or doing more with less through AI and automations, Client Success gives customer success professionals a true one-stop platform to manage all aspects of the customer journey. To learn more about the industry's fastest to implement customer success platform, visit www.clientsuccess.com. That's Client Success. Simple powerful customer success. Like you just even talked about one of the most challenging times of your professional career with this fundraising effort also yeah. being a success story, right? Because you were able to successfully raise. What were yeah. some of the other success stories, right? Because I feel like as women, especially, we're always so, we are always looking forward, which is important, but yeah. we don't take time to reflect and look at the successes that we've had. So yeah. what would you say some of those proud moments are? Because I'm sure you've had a bunch of those along the way. Yeah. I think just having a team that's thriving is really cool. I've primarily been a solopreneur. I've had like one full-time employee when I was running my agency. Um, so to be able to build a team, a leadership team too, within the company of people who actually just like, really care about our mission. They really care about empowering their teammates. Like That's just really cool to be around. And it's just like infectious. And we're a remote first team. So to feel that energy even through Slack is, is really cool. Like, of course, there are hard times, but it feels like the attitude is to show up with like collaboration and community and supporting each other. And, and it's, it's like, I hope we can hold on to that as the company grows and grows and our team um, gets bigger. But that's something I'm incredibly proud of. And, you know, I think back to like sometimes like early days when I was just like making things, I mean, aren't we all just kind of making things up as we go? But when I started a women's networking group, Iowa was ranked dead last in businesses owned by women. And that's why I started it. Cause I was like, there are people with great ideas. Like how do we get it off the ground? Mind you, we're in Des Moines. It's like, you know, a very big city. So it wasn't like Des Moines had the issue. It was like a statewide thing. But I was like, how do we bring people together to support each other's ideas and where they're at? And I built that into one of the fastest growing chapters in the country. And again, you're in this like people are like, what's Des Moines? You know, <laughs> like what is Iowa? <laughs> like, never heard of it. How could you build a thriving community in this like place? And it was really cool for me. It just gave me a glimpse of like, I am really good at building community. And if I can unlock that in different areas, like imagine what I can accomplish and do and like that has impact. And so I, I love, like, I'm very proud of the successes because they feel so meaningful. They weren't just like, I succeeded and I got this award and that fulfills my, like myself, right? Like I feel the impact of what I watch these women in business. And like, I know like one of my best friends photography business exploded because of this networking group. And I got to have a hand in that. That's so cool to watch her thrive today. Right. So to me, it's all about purpose and impact and like feeling that connection. I love that. You are so, you're so inspiring. Oh. Okay. Well, listen, I, I want to see how you take this because it seems like this has kind of been inter an interwoven theme throughout your professional journey. But one of my favorite sayings, and, and this is something we talk about on the podcast with everybody is empowered women, empower women. And, Absolutely. you know, I started this podcast as a resource to elevate the voices of successful women to share their journey. And so this is one way that I'm doing that. And I want to hear about like, what are the ways that you're committing to fem the future female leaders? Mm -hmm. I feel like I, from just like coffee dates with people who are like, Hey, can you help me understand like how to get started in a tech company to run in a community group? I always try to take the time to give back in that way. So that's very like tactical day to day in my own community. Um, one thing that's really resonated with me, like building a startup is so all consuming, right? There's barely any time. And I have two young kids and like 
life, life, life. Right. And, but I'm like, what is the thing I can do over and over to give back? Like it's the staple, it's the thing. And so every year I host like a women's pitch event competition in my city and three women get a chance to pitch their idea to a live audience. They all pay like $25, $30 a ticket and the community votes on who they want the money to go to. And those, that one individual gets the kind of the prize at the end. It's like a couple thousand, three thousand dollars ish. Um, but that to me is like, it's so cool because you get to bring this incredibly inspiring group of people together to share what they're doing in and for the community. And the community gets so amped about it. And so that's a very like, that's a big undertaking, right? Like it's not just like I'm empowering people through my social media content, right? Not that that's not meaningful, but it's a big lift. But for me, it's like, so again, I like that tangible, like the connection, the community. And so that's my way of being like, okay, outside of like what we're building, the impact within our platform and driving local commerce and all of that, like, what can we do from an event like day to day that puts money into people's uh, business bank accounts? Um, so that those are a couple ways, but yeah, I try. <laughs> That's really impressive. Okay, so you have to tell me more about this. So is this something you do by yourself? Is this part of Hummingbirds? Is this something you started a while back? Like, how, how did this originate? And then, like, are you doing this alone? Yeah. So it came out of when I was running that women's networking group. I was just like, okay, what's, you know, I really dug in with some of these women. I'm like, why aren't you, like, growing? Why aren't you getting the retail? What's happening to, like, plateau or not to, like, get you to that next level beyond mindset? Because that's always a huge part. But, you know, the answer is always money, right? Like, I need capital. It's hard to get business, like, bank loans when you don't have enough traction. Like, there's just a lot of barriers. But money is typically the biggest one. And so I was like, what if we do this? Like, could it get some people's ideas off the ground? Like, don't ask people to apply for it if they're looking to, like, they need a hundred thousand dollars to open their bakery. And it's like, well, $2,000 isn't going to move the needle for you. But if you wanted to do, you know, a project that would like two to three K could make an impact, this is great. So I did that through Fem City is the the group um, that I was running at the time. And then I just kind of held on to it. I ended up partnering with a local chamber a couple years ago to have more of a collaborative experience because it is like a big lift, but um, it's just kind of like, my passion project is my way of being staying connected to the small business community because once you're in tech too, it's like, I'm so focused on like building the team and the technology and the vision and the investors. It's like, but the small businesses is who it started with, right? The people we wanted to serve. So how do I, I never want to be that founder so far removed from the actual like boots on the ground day-to-day people that we're, we designed this for. So that's like kind of a way of staying in touch and still feeling, yeah, really like there's purpose behind it. Okay, so now you have this track record of making these investments. Have these companies that have won these awards, have they gone on and like, are they thriving? Are there some that have seen some real success? Yeah, it's really cool to see like where people have gone with it. Some, like one specifically ended up having like a brick and mortar she ended up opening. And like, this was part of that, building that confidence to be like, oh my gosh, you win. You have like a chunk you can set aside. Um one of them like created a really, she's like a race car driver and was able to create really cool programming for teenagers to be able to participate. Like, so cool. Like, that's okay. a thing for some people, right? <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it's cool. Like, no one's like, you know, gone on a shark tank or anything, but that's not the point, right? When you own that local. That's not the point of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. You own a local business. You're like, I want to do something locally for and in my community. So, yeah, it's so fun to watch all of their journeys and what they're creating beyond on the event. That's so cool. Uh, I can't even like, to your point, right, driving impact and connecting with people like you've tied these themes throughout your entire life, even not even just your professional career. And like, Mm -hmm. I don't know, that's such an amazing initiative to be able to do that and give back, but then also like watch how those companies evolve over the years, right? And then knowing that yeah. you had a small part in that success, it's got to feel yeah. so good. It does. It's like All right. Well, listen. <laughs> it, it, right. Exactly. It's, and everyone's looking for that dopamine hit a little yeah. bit here and there. Um, okay. Listen, you mentioned, obviously, you're doing all of these things. And if I recall, you've got two small children at home, right? Yeah. Which yeah. we all know that being a leader in any capacity is tough enough. Now you're a co-founder, you're fundraising, you're at the stage of growth in your company. How are you balancing the demands of your role and your priorities at work 
with your personal life? Because I know that that's really difficult. So what are, how are you doing that? And like, what are some of the strategies that you've put in place that you feel like, okay, this works for me? Yeah, totally. And I feel like it changes based on the season of like ages of kids, <laughs> like, you know, when it's winter versus it's summer, like that makes all the difference <laughs> in like a Midwest state too. But I would say I just continually learn about myself is like when I invest in like staying, like getting walks in, getting good sleep, like eating, like in a way that fuels my body. Like I always show up better in the world for my friends, for work, for anything. And so I always prioritize those things. Like um, whether it's like a quick 20 minute walk over lunch, because like, that's the gap I have between meetings. I'll put on a podcast and I'm like invigorated about an idea. And like, that to me is like, hits that sweet spot. Um, but I mean, I, hiring great people makes a huge difference too. I think having a team we really trust to then manage other employees, like that's a game changer as well. Like, cause you don't have to be in the day to day, like in the same way I used to. Um, and so it's trusting those teammates to like work towards the OKRs, hit the goals, like, and they're all on board. And I think that gives me a lot of confidence that I don't have to be like, okay, how are things going? Like, what do I need to do to like put out a fire? And like, frankly, we're winning as a company. We're doing really well. It's a very different position when you're struggling, right? Like we don't have product market fit. Like we can't fundraise, nothing's happening. Like that's a different mindset. So it requires way more mental capacity right now. Like we're crushing it. We're crushing it. And so I can be a little bit more, I don't know, out in the community doing things and versus feeling like I got to get on sales calls. I got to help the team and like really, really get my hands dirty. So it's all in phases, but I think like taking care of yourself and really knowing yourself. I think that's like having that in your grand book too. Like I know what lights me up. I know where I get my energy. I have really great relationships. If those cups are really full, like a lot of goodness flows from that. So it's just reminding myself I'm not perfect, right? Like I go weeks sometimes without working out or eating banana bread all day, right? (laughs) But like you got to like getting back into that centering mode for me is always like, oh yeah, like, okay, I'm drinking my water again, right? I'm taking my steps. I'm doing it. (laughs) I love that. I am also somebody who like invests in that, my physical health, my mental health. Mm -hmm. And like, to your point, right? Like you can't pour from an empty cup. So you've got to make sure that you're taking care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. Now, if I recall in our chats, you did take a long trip too with your husband, right? Didn't you like, wasn't there a big journey woven in here at some point too, if I recall? Yeah. Yeah. We're on, we call it our quest because we're like, this is going to happen over like the next decade plus. We want to go Alaska all the way down to Panama city on wheels. So that means basically like part of it on bike, part of it in car. And like, we want to take our kids on this adventure. Cause like, imagine all the pictures you'll see over time, like 10 year old Penelope versus three year old Penelope, like in this part of the world, but it's on this, like you can envision like a map going all the way, um, to and from. And so we do little chunks. So the last chunk we did um, just like a month ago for the last six-ish weeks was Panama City. So we started all the way at the end um, up to basically Liberia, Costa Rica, and the airport we flew out of. So we took it in chunks. I work, we work remote. And so my husband kind of took a little pause from his job and um, stayed with the kids, hunkered down. I worked on the in the days and would hang out with them on the beach at night and if anyone's from the Midwest, you know, like leaving in February is like the best time to get out of like this <laughs> crap, crap weather. So I was like, I always love seeking inspiration from travel and just like new people, new food, new environments. And so I will say it was really challenging towards the end. I really wanted to be home. I miss like so many things about like just my environment right here, like where I'm recording this with you. Um, and just like my day to day, like the coffee drinks I always get, like when I walk down the street. But overall, like such a cool thing. I'll never regret that, you know, taking the time to take the family and continue creating this like cool chapter in our lives. I, every time you're going to like telling me another story, I'm like more and more in awe of you. Um, I'm like, I want to be you when I grow up, Emily. Um, all right. So now we're, now you've kind of like lived a chunk of life, obviously by yeah. no means are we at the end here. Yeah. Thinking back on based on everything you've learned so far, if you had to go back and give younger Emily some advice, what would you offer her? Oh my gosh. Like embrace who you are. I think I for so long thought like, oh, I should be the kind of person who like gets a master's. I should be the person who aspires to X. 
instead of being like, this is who I am. How do I optimize for that? Like I've always, for example, like I'm terrible at details. Like if I didn't have Google calendar, I don't know where I would be in the world, like what I would do with my time and show up, but I, I don't thrive there. And so I know that. So like lean into it. Where can you show up that like where your superpowers are? And I just, yeah, I would tell her to like, be confident in who those and in, in who she is and what those characteristics are and keep going. And so I think that would probably be it. I love that. Now, obviously we did like a little backward look. Now we're going to look forward. Um, as you think about the evolution of your career, right? What does the future have in store for you? Now I know it's hard to predict the future because I'm sure you didn't predict when you were drumming that you would be where you are today, but what are some of the aspirations that you have for yourself that you think you're excited about as you you look forward? Yeah. I think like getting this company to a place of an, place of an acquisition is really exciting. Um, like that's kind of the whole goal or to go public if you take on venture capital. But um, just having that exit is really exciting for myself and my co-founder and the team, right? They all have stock, and stock options. And so to be able to offer that to them too, when we have this like moment, like let's work towards that. Like that's super exciting. And to just think about like how that wealth can transfer, right? Like I host these pitch events and we get $2,000. If I like have a successful exit, could I contribute more to the small business community? What more can I do as a woman leader in, in Des Moines? Like we see a lot of people making decisions in and for this city that are males and that's not a good or bad thing, but it's just like, how do we get some balance? And um, I think, some of those decisions can be made when you have like checks to write, right? So um, I see that and just continuing to be like this local amplifier is just kind of the like stake I've put in the ground. Like how can I make a difference for local communities to thrive? Right now it's through hummingbirds and that product and that platform we're building, but what other ways can I contribute so that these small business owners with big dreams can fulfill that and make our cities great? So that's totally where I see myself and also like traveling all over and having fun. And like, it's the seven. So I'm an enthusiast, right? So like, I'm always looking for ways to play and explore and adventure. And I've always have FOMO, right? Like I always, that's why I do these big trips. Cause I'm like, Oh my gosh, we got to do it. You know, like on a whim we're buying flights. Um, my husband's also a seven. So you can imagine how dangerous that is. <laughs> oh my um, gosh. <laughs> so yeah, it's been, yeah, I would say like, I really, like if we got one shot at this life, like let's have a good time and not have any regrets. And that's, the lens I try to have on as often as I can. I love that. All right. So before we wrap up today, what's one thing you want to leave our listeners with, right? This, they listened to this whole episode. They heard your whole journey. What's the one thing you're like, if you took nothing away from today, you're going to take this. I, I think this is a Brene Brown quote, but like follow the breadcrumbs of your curiosity. Like if you have a question, ask it. If you want something, like get curious, figure out how you can get, go after it. And like, if you're curious about something, like don't ignore that. Like, or if you have an inkling or an intuition, like lean in, what are you going to learn from it? And so I think that has just been like, we look for people when we hire, like, do you have curiosity? Like, are you, are you curious about yourself and the work you do and like how you show up in the world about other people? I think curiosity like opens so many doors too, um, as well. So I would say, yeah, follow those breadcrumbs. Or cookie crumbs, if you're more of like a sweets person. <laughs> I'll follow the breadcrumbs. I need a salt. I'm salty, not sweet. Um, yeah. All right, Emily. Listen, thank you so much for all of this that you've shared with us today. I'm sure our listeners are going to take a lot with them. I appreciate your time. Honestly, your your journey is truly inspiring. And I'm really excited to see what the future holds. I want to hear more about these companies that have won these awards and like these investments. I'm super interested in that. Um, but thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for what you're doing with this podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please rate and follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you again, and we'll see you soon. Hi, guys. I want to share a bit about an organization that I support called Wednesday Women. They're on a mission to increase the visibility of executive women leaders that you should know, learn from, and be inspired by. On LinkedIn, they share the profile of two amazing women each week on Wednesdays, of course. And now just imagine if we all followed, amplified, 
identified and nominated the women that we want to see more of. Their initiative provides examples of women CEOs, founders, sales executives, technical leaders, and so many more. By supporting Wednesday Women, you'll see more of these professionals in your social feeds, of course, but also on stages, podcasts, and panels. If you're interested in learning more and supporting their initiative, head over to www.wednesdaywomen.org or follow them on LinkedIn.